Hey guys, my name is Shai and I am recording this weekly reading on February 6th. Not a whole lot happening in terms of the astrology of this week, just two things that I wrote down. Um, on the 8th, it's Mars trine Uranus, Mars and Capricorn trine Uranus in Taurus. And honestly, like that's not just a one day thing, that, that energy is happening. Like you've already been feeling it for a few days and you're gonna be feeling it all week. It's the energy of the, the rebel, right? The energy of the rebel. Um, and how you <laughs> how you experience that is really going to depend on how you've been navigating the energies for the last couple of months, right? Um, I think we're all <laughs> pretty glad that this last week is over. It was pretty intense for all of us that were having fears of unity crop up, fears of unity cropping up in very weird, very unexpected ways. So there's a little bit of this going on. Um, if you... This basically depends on how well you have been able to focus, 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 focus on your path, focus on your alignment, focus on what serves you and letting go what doesn't, right? It's like like you're driving a windy mountain road and it's icy and it's a blizzard and you're going really, really fast. And it's like you can pull off that drive if you focus so so like your whole being needs to be focused, not on the cliff, not on the ice, not on all the things that can go wrong, but just focused on staying on your path and just doing your driving, right? That's the level of focus. Um, and the more, like the harder it is for you to focus, the more you're going to get derailed into those fears and angers, right? Fears and anger. The Our fears have been bubbling up into anger and even rage and even hate, in to, for some people in some experiences of this. So focus, 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 <laughs> focus. <laughs> that is that is the antidote to all of this. That is the key. And that is actually why this is happening. It is what we are all learning through this. And um, okay, yeah. <laughs> and once more for the third and final time of this segment, right? Obviously Mercury is going to be conjunct Pluto again next year, you know, about a year from now, but it's happening for the third and final time of this chunk of our experience on the 11th. <laughs> um, I feel like, uh, I don't remember when the other Mercury conjunct Plutos were. I know there was one on like the very end of December, the very end of December. So it's a little bit of a re repeating of this, that theme, whatever you were experiencing right around New Year's, the end of the end of the year coming up one more time. But I feel like this is more of a liberating energy, right? If you're really able to tap into these energies and ride them out and focus, then this is all completing the liberation process. This is about really utterly and finally claiming your sovereignty, claiming your sovereignty. You don't want to get stuck down in like the lower vibrations of the rebel where you're just fighting and where you're just self-sacrificing for your cause and maybe your cause isn't even fully in alignment with you. It's it's like, is your cause, are you really like aligned with your soul? Like is, is, your, is, is the cause that you're fighting for, is it really a soul level... Um, passion or purpose or is it more of like a fear-based <laughs> ego-based kind of human level cause so the more you're tuning into your soul's purpose and dropping out of the the, the the like human level lower frequencies of the rebel then you can use that rebel energy to just become sovereign to just become sovereign and okay i'm actually going to get something i wrote down <laughs> a few days ago when the sun and saturn were conjunct and uh, i think it's relevant here Okay, it was funny. I was I didn't know if I was going to share this on a video, but it's really relevant now. This was the epiphany I had. This was my big aha moment. I, um, I mean, why not? I, why don't I just tell the story? My husband and I had just had sex, and <laughs> we were like lying in bed afterwards. And that is when we experience so many of our like downloads and communication with spirit is like lounging around in bed, you know, in the afterglow. <laughs> and I keep this this book. Um, in a drawer in the bathroom on my like a master bathroom, I jump up and write all this stuff down. So this is something I had to jump out of bed for and write down because it suddenly clarified all of these fears. Cause I was really having fears of unity, like fears of earth-based unity. I was afraid. I felt like people were coming to get me type, type of fears. Right. And I, it, for a few moments there, I even had levels of paranoia where I felt like the universe was against me. Right. Like it was getting that intense for me. Um, and this, this is why epiphany moment that clarified all of this. And I realized in that moment that I had transcended that fear and realized like what it was driving me towards, what realization I was supposed to have with all of this. And this, this, this learning is going to be going on for us for still a couple more weeks. So 
I don't know if you can read my chicken scratch here, but this is just so I can see what I wrote. <laughs> you can change the rules of the universe, and then in parentheses, how they manifest in your reality. So, I guess I'll finish reading it. You can change the rules of the universe, how they manifest in your reality, by respectfully declining. Hold non-judgment for the rule and rule bearer. Turn around and create a new rule, then move in that direction. So the reason I was like caught up on this part is because that was a big thing for me. Because at first I was like, I can't change the rules of the universe. I'm just little old me, right? But you don't need to think about it that way. If you just think about, okay, it's not that you're changing the rules of the universe. It's that you're changing the rules of un the universe as they manifest in your reality. So that is way more manageable, right? That helped me, helped me realize that, wow, okay, so it's not actually about changing the rules of the universe for everybody in the whole universe. It's just about changing the rules of the universe for me, for my reality. It's like we actually get to select which rules come into our reality. So that's why that was so important. And it just suddenly seemed <laughs> so clear to me that if the universe seems to presenting you a rule and this you could be hearing rules of the universe you know by reading about you know different spiritual influencers different spiritual teachings all this stuff they all come with at the end of the day there are rules to the universe right and some of them maybe they don't resonate with you or some of them maybe you really don't understand and you don't need to we don't need to be triggered we don't even need to be we don't need to rebel against them treat the universe and treat the rules of the universe that are confronting you treat them just like you would like a person, <laughs> treat them like a person. Like you don't need to, if you disagree with something, right? You're not necessarily gonna just argue with that person and get all angry and like have a big conflict. You're just gonna respectfully disagree. And imagine if, I don't know, your roommate tried to impose a rule on the house and you would just be like, no, I'm gonna respectfully decline and I'm not gonna follow that rule because I don't agree with it. <laughs> Same thing with the rules of the universe as they manifest in your reality. If, if one is be really being pushed and if it just feels wrong in your core, it doesn't matter who's to, who's telling this to you. It doesn't. It, it, you could even think that the rule is coming through from your spiritual guidance. You could be like, "Wow, I, I'm really being guided towards this thing," and I don't know if that's even in my highest alignment. Like you, this is like next level discernment. Next level discernment. Like, and it's 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 like it's a graduation thing of your sovereignty as a spiritual being. It's just like graduating from being a like a kid to a teenager to adult, right? When you're a kid, you're under the rules of your parents. When you're a teenager, you start pushing and pushing and rebelling against the rules. And once you're an adult, it doesn't matter what your parents' rules are. You just transcend them and make up your own rules for your life. This is like that in terms of how you interact with the entire universe. So still just holding non-judgment, respectfully declining whatever the rule is, respectfully disagreeing with whoever made up the rule, including the universe, and then just walking off, <laughs> creating your reality, right? Deciding that is what I actually want out of my, in my reality. That is how I want the universe to work in my reality. And then you just start moving towards that. So this is like a no conflict way of getting out of conflict. <laughs> it's a no conflict way of getting out of conflict. It's a no conflict way of rebelling. You just do it with neutrality and you just respectfully set aside what's not for you and then you just gently move towards what you do want that's it that is that's the learning of the week the learning of this month <laughs> okay so that is that um i still haven't even mentioned what's going on with these guys um this little sun shroom here and this deck was selected by my cat who i woke up in the middle of the night to the telltale signs uh, or sounds of my cat destroying my stuff right cat people, you know what I mean? And I, when I sat down to do the reading, I found this deck was sitting on the desk and this sun shroom was sitting there. And I was like, this is just too perfect. I'm just going to leave it just like this. This sun shroom is from a video game called Plants vs. Zombies, <laughs> where you fight zombies by like shooting, like the plants, like shoot peas or, uh, and stuff at the zombies. You're just, you are the plants and the zombies are coming to get you, but you just grow more plants and like they keep the zombies away from your house. <laughs> and this sunshroom, you, you grow the sunshroom and it makes little balls of sunlight. It makes little bits of sunshine and you use the sunshine to power up your plants, to power up your defenses. So <laughs> I think you can see where the kind of message with this is going, right? Look to the light, cultivate the light, find the light, find something that brightens up your day and then use that to feed the, fu the fuel of your your little plant defenders, right? F fuel, <laughs> fuel your defenses, but it's not 
It's just like growing your garden, right? Imagine if you had a garden to defend you and, and the garden didn't have to do anything to defend you. It just grew. It just grew in lusciousness, just grew in beauty and just grew and grew in consciousness until you have this beautiful garden all grown around you and that you knew that nothing would get through the garden because the garden was so beautiful. <laughs> the garden is so beautiful, so peaceful, so full of love, so full of light that even if something moved through your garden, even if something went, went through the garden to get to you, by the time it got to you, it would be it would be something that you would love. <laughs> so grow your garden around you with your sunlight. Little sunroom. I'm going to leave him up. Okay. Five of swords. Yeah. So we are coming off of that, right? <laughs> coming off of that feeling of defeat. Um, and also the Five of Swords can be like picking up the pieces, picking up the pieces, picking up the pieces after a battle, picking up the pieces after heartbreak, picking up the pieces of your life. Because, you know, we are all planets direct and we are all planets direct for until the end of April. Okay. Um, and how I feel about that is your manifestations are going to start rolling. Your personal development is going to start rolling. You're out of this Mercury retrograde, but Mer Mercury, Mercury is still in its shadow period, meaning it is retraversing the space, the Capricorn space that had already like transited once, retrograded back over, and then now it's going through again. So even though the retrograde is over, we're still in a little bit of this redo, revising, revisiting type of energy, but and yet you're still moving forward, but the, the the speed at which we move forward is gonna to continue to increase over the next two months or so. Um, so as you pick up the pieces and as you start putting your life back together, as you start moving forward again um, with whatever it is in your life that that is relevant, um, don't push yourself to go too fast, right? It's still Aquarius season and then it's going to be Pisces season. Neither of those energies are very fast. So I think that's a little bit hampering the energy of the all planets direct. When we get into Aries season, then it is going to be an entirely different ballgame of lighting up, like lighting your fire, right? But things are going to slowly start clicking to place very much under the influence of the Taurus North Node, meaning you're going to make a couple steps forward and then there's going to be obstacles and there might be, be delays, there might be setbacks, but try to celebrate those as actual victories. Because just imagine, imagine you're walking on a road of your manifestations and you're walking, 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 and you can't see all the way ahead. Um, and then you walk and walk and then you find an obstacle. There's a boulder in your path. It's an obstacle and then it's a setback. And you might think, oh, like all is lost. Why do I even bother? It's all over. I'm not going to be able to do it. It's like, no, it's actually a success that you ran into that obstacle because running into the obstacle is a sign of how far you've come, right? That obstacle was always in your path. You just couldn't see it yet. So the fact that you can see it just means, okay, now you just work the problem. This is going to be the best thing you can do for yourself over the next couple of months, even the rest of the whole year. <laughs> Every time you come up to an obstacle, just work the problem. Work the problem. Don't allow yourself to despair. Focus, focus, focus. Keep that laser like focused on just work on the problem and understand that, okay, maybe you wanted this thing to manifest this month, but is it really in the, the grand scheme of your entire life? Is it really make a difference if it takes an extra six months to manifest? Really? No, it doesn't, right? No, it doesn't because you're ascending up out of the time construct anyway. So don't, don't worry about how long it takes. Um, just keep working on it one challenge, one setback at a time. Yeah. Ten of Wands. You're putting bound down your burdens and you are working on harvesting something, but look, you haven't quite put the burden down yet, right? Five of Wands, Five of Swords, Ten of Wands. That's a lot of heavy, dense energy. Let's see where this is all going. Okay, I'm only going to take this one because that was the one that popped out. Oh, damn, what do we got here? The Wheel of Fortune and the High Priestess. Okay, I can't put them back in the deck. <laughs> Okay, so we were wondering, where is this all going? Where is this all going? With your feelings of defeat, maybe a little bit of despair, maybe a bit of facing your fears. Here is the sovereignty that this is all leading towards, right? No longer the rebel, now the empress or the emperor, right? Now you are the ruler. You're graduating from rebel to ruler. You're graduating from sulky teenager who's fighting against the rules to creator of your own reality, right? You are a creator being in human form. You are the empress, the emperor, the ruler. 
and everything is shifting and moving and grooving in perfect divine harmony the wheel of fortune see <laughs> all planets direct things are starting to shift but that can feel like up in the air um this is again the wheel of fortune is focus 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 because when you're riding the wheel and the wheel is turning do you want to be on the outside of the wheel well i mean maybe you can you can do that that'll make everything really fast really insane really a whirlwind because the outside of the wheel moves so much faster right but if you can stay focused stay centered right at the center of the wheel then all the chaos will turn around you and you will be centered so get so centered, so, 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 so centered. And then you can be in this weird position where everyone around you seems to be having tower moments and chaos and insanity, but you'll be sitting there going like, wow, everything's pretty okay with me. I'm, I just feel solid. I feel good, <laughs> right? Focus, 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 focus. Hi, priestess, okay? Trust your gut, trust your intuition. This is even like... Trust your intuition over your intuition. Trust your gut over your intuition. Trust your gut over your intuition, okay? What does that mean? This means that, especially for you guys in particular, since you are so, all of you, so fantastically psychic, intuitive, empathic, tuned in, sensitive to just energy, all of it, right? Um, I, I get shivers when I say that. You, you guys are like all more tuned in than you give yourself credit for, I promise you, every single one of you. <laughs> You guys could be receiving guidance that you are ulti that you that you can that you can disagree with. Like you can disagree with your with your guidance, right? If your inner guidance system is sending you a direction or an idea or a rule or an invitation, you don't necessarily need to agree, right? You might think that, you know, it's because uh, because you're thinking, okay, I always follow my intuition, right? I always follow my inner guidance. My uh, inner guidance always leads me the right way. That is true. But you're entering a realm of abstraction where you're getting more abstract layers of guidance. Like there's more variety in terms of the streams of data that you're tuning into there. It's like the horizon is opening and you're open up to more suggestions. It's like suddenly you have more guides to put it that way, or suddenly you have more friends telling you their ideas, right? And any one of these different ideas that come to you, any one of these streams of guidance, they could all be valid and good, but you don't need to agree with all of them. You don't need to take action on all of them. Um, an invitation could come through and you could be, you know what? I don't really know about that. I'm going to sit on that. I'm just going to not decide anything about that for a while. And then a few days later, you might realize, wait, 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 no, I'm going to disagree with that guidance. <laughs> you can do that. Um, so personal example is uh, a few days ago, I kept feeling, this was like a week ago, I guess. I kept feeling like I was being guided to like make some kind of vow where I dedicated my life to serving the collective. And <laughs> I remember feeling like on the one hand that resonated and I felt inspired to do that. But on the, on the other hand, I just, I didn't do it. I just kept not doing it. I kept putting it off going, well, like, I don't know if I want to do that. And then I was like, oh, you know, you're just being egotistical. You just don't want to dedicate your life to service and blah, 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 blah. A couple days go by and I must have worked on this on the astral when I was asleep because I woke up and suddenly it was like crystal clear. I was like, I don't need to do that. I don't need to make any vows. I don't need to dedicate my life to anything, even dedicating my life to serving the collective. Like, why would I Why would I do that? I understood that that guidance was only coming through, that that little intuitive nudge is only coming through because I have done that in the past, right? So you could have guidance that's coming through basically echoing your past, echoing your past, echoing vows you made in the past life, echoing choices you made in your past life, but you don't need to make those same choices again. Sure, maybe you could do that. Sure, maybe I could have dedicated my life to the spiritual service but <laughs> the funny thing is I am going to live a life of spiritual service whether or not I dedicate my life to it there's no reason to me to actually do that to actually take that step of like tying myself up energetically why why would why would I do that <laughs> and the lesson for me was it's all about choice every day it's about choice I wake up and I can choose to dedicate to I can choose to make choices in the day where I choose to be of service or I can just choose to fuck off and take the day off and like n not do anything and just be entirely self-centered, <laughs> right? W which can actually just, of course, feed back around into helping me be of more service the next day or whatever. So just, it's like follow, follow your gut over your intuition even because your intuition, your spiritual guidance could bring you, um, like I said, suggestions or choices or directions and 
it, it could be like your mind might say yes, your intuition might say yes, your inner guidance compass might be telling you to go in that direction, but your gut, your gut, this is like your instincts, right? This is why it's so important to get like so in tune with your body, right? This is what the North Node in Taurus is also teaching us. Is it's grounding us into our body. So that's why I'm gonna use the word gut. It's your body's instincts. That's the intuition of your body, right? Instinct, instinct, your gut. You gotta sit with it and go, hmm, what is my gut saying, right? How does my body feel when I think about this? You gotta trust your gut, trust your gut, because that is how, <laughs> that is how you will actually navigate the, the variety of intuitive guidance that your inner compass, it's like, I keep actually seeing your, your inner compass is like spinning. Your inner compass is spinning because so much is going on. Um, but that's okay because your gut, your gut is solid. <laughs> your gut is solid. Your body knows what's up. <sighs> just looking around, seeing if any other decks want to come out for this. Okay, just one. Starseed Oracle. Okay, yeah, two. <laughs> the Courageous Peony and All Paths Lead Home. This is my all-time favorite card in this deck. I'll get to that in a second. Now I see why it was like tugging at me, <laughs> even though I almost never draw two cards right off the top, right? The Courageous Peony, multifaceted, unique nature. Let yourself be seen. You are unfolding on a whole new level. And as you unfold, you become the sovereign. You become, become the emperor, the empress, the ruler, right? You become sovereign by unfolding, by unfolding. This is literally just a new level of your unfolding. And it's like multifaceted, right? Multifaceted. That's why you're becoming more various. You're becoming, you're like integrating your sub personalities. You're integrating all of the different aspects of yourself. You're starting to do more different things in your life. And you're also tuning into more different spiritual energies. Everything is opening up. You're becoming more, you're so much more tuned into more, which requires a higher level of focus and a higher level of discernment. You know, it's just a new level of practicing this. All paths lead home. Guys, this is the best card. It almost makes me cry. <laughs> I... I had a dream about this card once, okay? It's inner authority, intuition, turn your gaze within. Okay, this card on the one hand tells you, right? Turn your gaze within, tune into your in inner intuition, your inner eye, your gut, right? But at the same time, don't stress about it because it's impossible for you to mess this up. It is impossible for you to make a mistake. It is impossible for you to take a wrong turn because all paths lead home all paths lead home. So it doesn't matter if you go left or right. It doesn't matter if you do or don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. None of it matters. All paths lead home. Every single choice you can make will just take you one step closer to where you're going. That's how it works, right? All paths lead home. Um, and if you ever find yourself in the darkness, in a dark labyrinth, right? If you ever find yourself in a dark labyrinth and you don't know how you got there and you don't know how you get out, just remember this. This is like engrave this into your soul, okay? All paths lead home. Write that on your soul. Keep that with you forever. That is the only thing you need to know. The only thing you need to know as you navigate the cosmos. All paths lead home. Remember that? That means all you need to do. Imagine that you just got your, you woke up and you're in a dark labyrinth. Maybe you can't even see, maybe you're blind, but you can feel the walls on either side of you and you have no idea where to go. You don't know how to, you don't know how to get out. You don't know how to get home, get home. You just one step, one step, one step. You can keep doing that, right? Just one step in front of the other, one step, one step. Maybe you find a dead end, it's fine. All paths lead home. You just go back, you take a new way. All paths lead home. All you need to do is keep moving. That's it, that is the only thing. One step at a time, one step at a time. If you get redirected, then you just keep one stepping at a time that way. <laughs> if you take her on, if you take it, find a dead end, you just backtrack and then one step ahead in a different way. All paths lead home. You just keep stepping and then you get there. All paths lead home. That's all you need to know. <laughs> I love you guys and good luck. Bye.